or listening to a podcast from Glen Store Abbey. Liturgical prayer is a very multidimensional aspect of the monastic life. For us here in Glenstall, one of the key aspects of liturgical prayer is that it's something that we do together as a community, as a church. So that business of actually building community through prayer is a critical dimension of our liturgical life together. And in our context here, it takes place in a church. St. Benedict is very clear that the church is a space that's specifically set aside for prayer in common. And he also is very attentive to the fact that liturgical prayer and private prayer are not necessarily the same thing. Liturgical prayer rhythms the day, so to speak, with a cycle of morning prayer and mass and vespers and compline, it sets the basic shape of the day, of the monastic day. It is the core task, and it's the task that is to be preferred above all others, as St. Benedict says. It not only rhythms the day, it rhythms the year, so that there are seasons of the year. We celebrate Advent in the run-up to Christmas and Christmas tide after Christmas. We celebrate Lent for the 40 days running up to uh, the Triduum to Easter. And then we celebrate Easter tide for 50 days after Easter. So we spend a lot of our year framing and celebrating various different elements of the Christian story by readings and by, by hymns in the church that we sing and read together. We explore the nature of our Christian experience together in the church in time. And one of the most important elements of that togetherness in the church in time is that we are present. It's actually where we choose to spend our time. We could spend it in lots and lots of other ways, but we are present in the church together in time. And that says a lot. It's where we place the weight of our being. And we're not only present, but we are attentive. We listen as the rule asks us to do, we are attentive to the rhythms, both in the liturgy and within ourselves. And the liturgy provides a framework for us to live those rhythms and to be attentive to what's going on in them. The liturgy is often called the prayer of the church. So there's a dimension of our prayer that's not just about us. It's about the whole church. A lot of our prayer is interceding for others. We pray for people. We pray for the dead. We pray for ourselves. And we pray in lots of different ways. We pray through scriptural readings and also, most notably and perhaps most importantly, by the prayer of the Psalms. And I draw to your attention to two dimensions of the Psalms, that there's Psalms of lamentation, a Psalm, a prayer that the world was otherwise, a frustration with the world, wishing that things were not as they are. And then there's Psalms of praise. Praise is thanksgiving for the world as it is. So we do both of those things. We lament and we praise. And prayer of the church is often the law of prayer, is the law of what we believe. The lex orandi is the lex credendi. We state what we believe by our, in our prayer. And by constantly stating it to the world and to ourselves, we make it what we believe. And I think most fundamentally, I think one of the things about liturgical prayer that's so important 
is that it's not just something we do. The liturgy, in many ways, works on us. The liturgy does us. So that over time, it is the liturgy that begins to have its effect on us and to open us to God's grace.